Bowers Intelligent Transportation moves over 6,000 people to and from work every day in luxury and style. Our state-of-the-art luxury coaches are fully equipped with leatherette seating, Wi-Fi, direct TV, Corian tables, power outlets for your phone or laptop, and even a bathroom. Each Bowers coach removes as many as 52 cars and 2 million pounds of carbon monoxide per year. Commute to and from work for as low as $13 a day. Call Bowers Intelligent Transportation today at 800-546-6688 or online at BowersIT.com. Ravens are gonna kill us. I don't think so. The Ravens? Hey guys, I'm Will Durst. And I'm Willie Brown. And I'm Paul Wells of Flow Communications. Welcome to the Will and Willie Show, Election Special 2011, brought to you by Bowers Intelligent Transportation. Got a lot of ground to cover in our hour. The San Francisco mayor's election, the effects of ranked choice voting, got propositions, the Occupy movement, impact of the 2012 presidential election campaign. And you're going to have to listen really quickly, <laughs> because all that's going to be covered in this show. We could do a show on each one of those, uh, <laughs> especially the mayor's election, which is coming up uh, in a couple days now. Well, actually, tomorrow or the next day. Yes. And uh, I think that this gentleman has a good chance of getting reelected. Let me read from page six of the Bible, <laughs> uh, the Ed Lee story, an unauthorized biography. Former Mayor Willie Brown <clears throat> seen the occasion and spoke with his characteristic showmanship and hypnotic charm about the historic nature of I the I didn't day. write that. <laughs> hypnotic I did. charm. Right. Hypnotic charm. I didn't write that. I didn't write that at all. Yeah, that As should... a matter of fact, it's on an unauthorized quote. It, it's an unauthorized biography. Yes. As a matter of fact, the most interesting biographies are those that are unauthorized because that way you don't have to stick to the truth. <laughs> you can be yeah. as creative as you may wish to be. This one is a and little lighter than the air. <laughs> so I think it's floating away. Yes, and we have 16 candidates, of which nine are considered very serious candidates, and we have ranked choice voting, which really puts a spin. I don't okay, know whether to call it ranked choice though, voting or ranked Paul, choice Paul, voting. Paul, you start with the seriousness based upon who can get funded. And right. in San Francisco, you uh, have what we call, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, voter paid for candidates. In other words, the voters have provided money uh, for candidates, and you match it with X number of dollars you put up, and the city puts up Y plus X number of dollars. Now, does that, does that include, shall we say, the... Uh uh, Second-tier candidates like all the candidates. Cesar Oscarunes, who, who is a all perennial candidate. candidate. Every candidate running. is eligible if every candidate meets the threshold requirements on collected money. You have to collect a certain amount of money so let's in say certain you denominations. Collect Fifty grand. Yeah, you collect tw the, twenty-five grand or something like and that. And then the city gives you twenty-five or fifty. No, no, grand. no. They give you a lot more than that. They really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, you can probably collect maybe four hundred grand, and you'll get another eight hundred grand from the city. The max you can do is 1.2 million total. Yeah, so you can, you know, you could, I could put up $500 on your behalf today, and as soon as you qualify, and the city sends you the money, I you can, can give me back. my 500 back. Ah! <laughs> oh, what an something Why did they think that? I don't know, Will, but you know, I want to correct one thing you said. Mayor Lee is not going to be reelected because he hasn't been elected yet. He was appointed ah. mayor. And according to a poll that appeared in San Francisco Weekly back in June, 40% of the people polled still thought that Gavin Newsom was our mayor. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's more of a tribute to the fact that he's lieutenant governor and nobody knows where he's gone. No, than, that's than more of a tribute to his awesome presence full time in San Francisco, yeah. still mm -hmm. doing the things Everywhere you, you go, you see him. As a matter of fact, Paul, it would have been more impressive if you'd say 40% of the people thought I was still mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been a lot more impressed. Who's raised the most money for their, for their campaign? Ed Lee. Ed Lee has raised the Ed, most. All the other candidates have raised money in the fashion that qualified them for assistance. And so what they did is they set the bar fairly low for themselves not to exceed what's necessary to get matching dollars. 
And so they stop pursuing money. It's kind of funny because the people who write about this don't understand that. So they will say, Will Durst raised 400 grand, and Willie Brown raised a million too. Well, yeah, Willie Brown raised a million too because Willie Brown is not taking any public financing. Will Durst raised 400 grand because that's all he needed to get the 800 public. to become a million too. They didn't say that. You know, in the Chronicle, they didn't say that. It's just, and it's misleading to the public. In part, I suspect that's why the public is confused about who the mayor is. <laughs> Not good information. What about, how is ranked choice going to affect all this? Ranked choice affects it in a very, very unusual way. I don't know any place uh, in this region where rank has been, ranked choice has been practiced, where the person who was projected to be number one has won. actually won, except with Newsom, but then he, he didn't have any opposition. For an example, over in Oakland, Gene Kwan was number two. A fellow named Don, Don Rado Prado. was projected to be number one. He got 40 or so percent of the vote on the first count, and he lost. In District 10, uh, Malia Korn, who is now the supervisor, was number four. Lynette Sweet was projected to be number one, and she ended up still on the bar board. Clint Riley's wife, Janet right. Riley, was projected to be number one supervisor. over in that district, in the supervisor district, Mark Farrell, number two, one. Eric Marr is on the board of supervisors. Sue Lee was projected to be number one. So you've got one after another of everybody who's always won losing and somebody who's two, three, or four winning. So Ed Lee has that risk. But, but all these people had high negatives. Don Parada had high negatives. Janet Riley had high negatives. So even Lynette though they were- Lynette Sweet had high yeah, negatives. Yeah, so even though they were number one, they also had, a, they, they didn't get a lot of number twos or number threes. They had a core constituency. What happens when you throw 14 or 16 or whatever it is, names on the ballot, and you're only eliminating one at a time, and first we're getting rid of uh, Cesar, uh, Oscar Owens, you know, I mean the perennial candidates. So you have nine frontier candidates, and you're getting rid of five immediately. Now, is that going to affect it slowly? Does it, does it matter more? I think it matters a lot more because in ranked choice voting, you pretty much got to be nice to everybody. You've got to make sure that there's nobody who's offended. Uh, you know, you can't say Dennis Herrera is really awful. He's a walking conflict of interest trying to represent the mayor while running against the mayor. You can't say uh, John Avalos, who wishes to employ only San Franciscans, and my uncle lives over in Vallejo, and he's helping me out, and I wish he'd let him keep the job. You can't say any of that. You gotta ignore all of that. You gotta say, you know, Avalos is a very nice man. I love the tattoo. You know, you gotta, you gotta really be good. So that's why everybody, all, all the hit pieces have been Ed anonymous, or and have been anonymous, or independent expenditures, and it's all right. because nobody wishes to appear. Now, on the other hand, I think Dennis Herrera deliberately said, "I don't want any Chinese votes. Therefore, I'm going to." Absolutely run against everything Chinese. I'm going to run but against the Central Chinese, Freeway. There's three no, no, Chinese. Four Chinese. Four, now, four Chinese and Adachi, one Japanese. Li, Yi, and Ting. Chu. Phil Ting also. Oh. And Chu. And Chu. And, and David Chu. Five. Yeah. Now, does the ranked choice voting favor an Asian mayor? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you start out with the volume of Asians who will participate this time, and if the Asian vote only goes for Asians, which is a distinct possibility. So one, two, three. Yeah, you're gonna be, you, you don't have a hard time getting over. It's almost as if, if you were the only gay in the race, and you really, you know, was like the Harvey Milk type gay, and you could get all the gay votes, you could pretty much lock down a whole segment of the people who voted. Is, the that, what Bevin, is that what Bevin's doing? No, he can't, because Herrera is out gaying him. Well, both, you know. <laughs> no, is not gay. No, he isn't gay, but he is maintaining. He's got an because he because he stepped out there and he's out gaying him. Yeah, on the on on the uh, same sex marriage, he's he's literally but generating to talk more about interest. not antagonizing any segment of the audience. Dufty's ad, his television ad, is wonderful. Uh, him and his daughter, Sydney, on Muni, it's a wonderful ad. I'm gonna vote for him just for that ad. I don't know if I'll vote one, two, or three, but uh, he's definitely in my uh, you know, top well, he, tier. He's got a good vote for me, too, because he was working for me. He worked for <laughs> me. He ran 
My neighborhood services, if you recall. Everybody in this town has worked for you. At one time. At one time, yeah. yeah. You know, the odd thing. I own a hell of a plantation. <laughs> the odd thing about the ballot is Bevan Dufty's name is the only one where there's no credit. There's no, like, what does he do? It's just blank. Yeah, he's Not jobless. Former Board of Supervisors, even for Tony Hall, it says retired civil. Well, but servant. Bevan is none of those. He has no job. Right. And so he can't put anything on there phony, uh -huh. period. But it is rather unique. At any rate, if you have an identifiable constituency, as John Avalos does, mm -hmm. John Avalos is the progressive candidate in this race. He's the commie pinko yellow red bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He's the leftist of all He's the candidates. The, he yeah. is the leftist yeah. of all the candidates. Because in San Francisco, we're bipartisan. <laughs> we're progressive and liberal. <laughs> all, all in the same. But <laughs> Jane Kwan managed to combine the two in Oakland. Right. She united. She did something that can't be done. You can't unite the left and the right. <laughs> she did it. Mm -hmm. You mean when she ran? No. No. When recently. She, when, when, when she, she left tear out. Gas. <laughs> <laughs> when she left out. When I was she... out of the loop. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you get with Occupy. This Occupy movement, by the way. Yes. Uh, it hasn't had an effect yet on the local mayor's race because... But it has kept Ed Lee from taking any sort of... Uh, action that would, you know, have a backlash over the over the last week and a half. I would guess what really kept him from doing that was what happened in Oakland. In Oakland, yeah. <laughs> this is some of the things that we're going to cover in the segments with our guests. We have we Ross Mercurimi. Oh, good. Yes, one of the candidates for he, sheriff of San Francisco. What, I thought you thought he was part of Occupy. And Christine Pelosi, <laughs> Don Solon will be around with us too, and uh, we'll be continuing with the Will and Willie show. I'm Paul Wells with Willie Brown and Will oh, Durst, Lord. and we have a lot to cover today on the Will and Willie election special. It's the election special. It's going to be fun. Bowers Intelligent Transportation moves over 6,000 people to and from work every day in luxury and style. Our state-of-the-art luxury coaches are fully equipped with leatherette seating, Wi-Fi, direct TV, Corian tables, power outlets for your phone or laptop, and even a bathroom. Each Bowers coach removes as many as 52 cars and 2 million pounds of carbon monoxide per year. Commute to and from work for as low as $13 a day. Call Bowers Intelligent Transportation today at 800-546-6688 or online at BowersIT.com. 